Where do I even start? So it was officially a year ago that I officially decided that I wanted to take the leap into minimalism and this past year has been nothing short of incredible. I feel like the decision that kind of led me to all of this in like the weeks, months, years before I became a minimalist, it's kind of just like this need to declutter, refresh, simplify. There was always something at the back of my head nagging me. but. Even though I was decluttering and trying to simplify my life, I kept buying things and replacing all of the clutter in my house or stuffing things that were old and sentimental or I thought they were sentimental just into boxes in different hidden places in my house. But one day something clicked and I just know that I'm never going back. So let's settle in and talk about what the last year of minimalism was like for me. So obviously minimalism is kind of just cutting down the amount of possessions that you have. For me, it really just means living intentionally and I think that's the main reason why I decided to go down this path and why I found it because when I started my YouTube channel, the whole goal, I guess, the mission statement, if you will, was to find realistic ways to live a happy and intentional life. For me, minimalism is that. It really encompasses all of that. Minimalism also means to me having a respect for the environment because it naturally causes you to reevaluate your morals and spending habits and kind of just reject all the consumerism that we see on a daily basis. It also means simplifying my home and reducing the mental and visual clutter that exists. It means letting go and accepting myself where I am. And it also means just using and buying the things that feel truly aligned with who I am and what I value. And all of that kind of just lends itself to a slower, more intentional pace of life and just having patience in general with everything. So I will say that my life has gotten better in so many ways, but being someone with ADHD, minimalism has basically saved my life because the way that I've been getting rid of things has been kind of slow and gradual. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of change or it doesn't seem like a crazy amount of visual clutter that is no longer there. But when I compare videos of when I first started decluttering to now, it's truly crazy because the amount that I have been able to get out, even all those little small things combined, have made a huge difference in so many ways. I feel like I can finally rest and relax and feel calm in my home. And there's so much less clutter in the drawers, in the closets, in random little crevices and cracks in my house. And I feel like that was taking up so much of my mental space that I didn't realize. I used to have this thing, I always feel at the back of my mind like I'm forgetting something or forgetting to do something or there's something nagging me at the back of my head. And seriously, since I've started decluttering all of these things and there's not like a random box of doom hidden somewhere or a random box of crap that I don't know what's inside it or haven't touched it or used it in years, I feel like so much mental space has been cleared up that I really haven't felt that I'm forgetting something thing that used to be a constant annoyance in my life. I haven't felt it in months and I can't tell you how good that feels. Decision fatigue is such a real thing, especially for people that are neurodivergent. When there's less stuff to take care of and less stuff to choose from, just in general, of like what to use, what to do, what to clean, what to organize, whatever, it simplifies your life and clears up your brain space so much, I can't even tell you. I feel like I have so much more time to be creative, I have so much more energy and mental space to be creative, and I just feel feel so much happier in general. And the slower and more intentional pace of my life that I have 
kind of this has naturally flowed into has really changed everything like i find myself being so much less irritable and annoyed at things obviously in new york and being someone that is neurodivergent it can be extremely overstimulating especially as like an introvert there's so many things stacked against me being here but i find myself being so much more calm when I'm like on the subway or whatever. I feel like there's so many things in place in my life to make that happen. I have noise canceling headphones, which is one of my most prized possessions. I have my little everything journal that I kind of dump all my thoughts into when I need. I have my Kindle, so I have like a million books at the tip of my fingers at any moment. I don't know, I just feel so much more calm. I feel so much more centered. I honestly sometimes being in New York feel I've felt as crazy as this city can make you feel I've been close to that point but I feel so calm that sometimes when I'm sitting on the subway and like something wild is happening and I'm just like okay it's fine I'm just gonna continue to have a nice day and be on my way I feel like I have a secret I don't know I feel like my life just feels so much more simple now and that's not how most people feel when they live in a city especially New York I honestly kind of feel indestructible and it's a really amazing feeling obviously there are still moments where I feel very overwhelmed or on the edge or overstimulated that is just something that is absolutely bound to happen living here and just being who I am and like having hormones and being a human being and sometimes in the apartment when I'm here the clutter that we have left or the clutter that isn't mine can sometimes feel very overwhelming but at the end of the day I feel like I get over those moments of overwhelm so much faster now than I used to when it used to just start this seed of resentment in me and kind of grow into a giant tree of bitterness <laughs> and depression. Generally, I just feel so much more free and light and excited and ready to go to New Zealand, although I finally truly settled into being here for the next five years. For those of you who don't know, my boyfriend and I are going to be moving to New Zealand in five years and I kind of started this minimalism journey to help me because honestly, when we move, I want to own as few things as possible. Unfortunately, my boyfriend is not really able to be a minimalist because of all the stuff that he has in terms of like music and carpentry, all of his tools and music gear, but that's fine because if he needs to pay for a shipping container, then he can. I'm saving my money, saving my sanity, and I am moving to New Zealand, hopefully just shipping like one or two of those little plastic moving crates and a suitcase or two. And that's my goal. That is truly my goal. Another thing that I've definitely learned over the past year is that I have really screwed myself over with preemptive purchases. <laughs> I have learned to have a lot more patience now when buying things. There's so many purchases that I've made that I just feel like was a waste of my money because it was either not used or it was usually something that I purchased and then either didn't use or didn't use as much as I thought I was going to or it ended up not being useful or necessary. So now I've become a lot more patient in terms of waiting to buy something or letting myself think about it for a couple of days or weeks before I purchase it and I really, really need something. I think the funniest thing that happened to me in the past year was essentially the fact that I decided to go minimalist about a week or two before getting my dog and being so excited to have my own dog for the first time since I was a really, really young kid and buying a couple of things. I really didn't go crazy. I bought a bed, two or three toys, and maybe like a couple of brushes or whatever. He ended up being scared of the fluffy toy, not using the Chuck It fetch toy because he doesn't like fetch, doesn't know how to play, and doesn't use the bed. So I'm like, okay, how did I buy like the least amount of things possible for a dog? And he's more of a minimalist than I am. I just thought that was really funny that I unintentionally ended up adopting a super minimalist dog. I find that hilarious. In general, I'm just so grateful for all the lessons that minimalism has taught me over the past year and all of the things that I'm able to let go of.
It's definitely really hard to let go of the items that you have spent your hard-earned money on, things that you have maybe an emotional tie with, or things that were gifted to you, or whatever. There's a lot of emotions charged within our stuff, and there's a lot of guilt and shame. So many conflicting emotions when you're getting rid of things, but I can tell you it sucks for about a day at the most, and then afterwards you feel so much better. You feel so much lighter. And honestly, I feel like my self-esteem has gone up a lot. I was never like a huge makeup person or like fashion girly or whatever, but really forcing myself to focus in my wardrobe and get rid of excess makeup and heels and dresses and stuff really showed me that I was still definitely holding on to this fantasy version of myself that was like a slightly more put together version of me that like really only comes out less than five times a year. So having all of this excess stuff was just not serving any purpose for me whatsoever besides reminding me of the fact that every single day all I do is dress for comfort and that is totally fine. I have just truly accepted that that is my most authentic version and I love it. The fact that I can just go into my wardrobe, basically close my eyes, pick something out, and there's a 100% chance that I will love the piece of clothing that I've taken out of my closet is something that not most people can say. I used to be one of the people, along with probably every other person watching this video, where you are sitting in a mountain of clothing and you go, I have nothing to wear. It's because you're drowning in a pile of clothes that you don't even like that much. The amount of time that I've saved on picking out clothes in the morning is incredible. Truly. All in all, I feel like I could talk about all the things that I've learned about myself in the past year for hours. And I'm just gonna end with the fact that I'm so excited to see where this takes me. I also just really wanted to say how deeply and genuinely grateful I am for you guys. Without all of your support and comments and feedback, I really don't think I would be where I am in my minimalism journey right now. I think I would be miles farther back in the growth and change that I've seen within myself and my space. And I'm just really, really grateful for all of you watching along and caring so much about this and reflecting and seeing yourself in me because that's really all we want at the end of the day, right? Is community and camaraderie and support and to be seen, you know? I would love to hear something that you guys have learned about your minimalism journey or just your decluttering journey that you've learned in the past year or since you started. I really, really love chatting with you guys in the comments and talking with everyone and having us be supportive and have a little community in there. It really makes me so happy. But anyways, that is all for this video. My camera's about to die. <laughs> Until the next one, I'm sending you all my love because we're all just trying our best out here and I think we're doing a pretty good job. So I will see you guys next week.